You're watching Sipping Off the Cuff on TequilaAficionado.com, part of Tequila Aficionado Media. I'm Alex Perez in Southern California. I am Mike Morales here in San Antonio, and Alex and I have been beside ourselves uh, dissecting number, number Juan. 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 There can be only Juan. It's clever, right? That's a stupid movie. Number Juan. Number Juan. I remember <laughs> when, when the guy uh, for... Uh, that pro wrestler in the movie, where he was telling he was telling him how good he was, and your arms are number one, <laughs> and Ramsey's legs are number one. <laughs> Ramsey's legs. <laughs> um, this, anyway, uh, we we fell all over ourselves with the blanco. This is a reposado. Now, uh, I was telling Alex off camera. This, this, this with the shirt and the bottle on the on the screen. Uh, the, the shirt on the. With, it looks like a red liquid in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, oh, I know because of my shirt. Yeah, it looks it looks pink. It's a it's a pink reposado. No, not really. Um, actually, this I didn't notice this. It has the uh, the Echo Mexico eagle. I, do I have it upside down or right side up? I can't tell. But anyway, um, the this is the second time I was telling Alice. This is the second time that um, we have uh, tried a brand that has completely skipped the. Añejo category, and uh, I was referring to uh, Mi Campo because that one, uh, the market for to Mi, Mi Campo was uh, specifically marketed to millennials. In this case, mm -hmm. and, and I said it to Alex then, I said, you know, Alex, this uh, the repo, that reposado was so hearty that it was almost as if it, it, had, it had accomplished what it set out to do to be both a repo and an añejo right. and, and not have to and not have to price it you know at the añejo category and this is what? no no re, t what did you say it was the um the uh the aging process on this one so this one is a triple barrel blend which is wow. very interesting triple barrel blend of french and american white oak aged a full nine months. So they're calling it a superior reposado. Okay, so um, yes. that being said, for those for those people who like añejos, this reposado would probably cut the mustard. Yeah. Let me see what kind of nose it's got. Beautiful nose. Ooh, oh, that's so pretty. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I, I just, we just opened these. I haven't even, you know, we, I, off camera, Alex and I just broke the seal on this, on this uh, reposado. Nice. This is cologne, dude. I don't want to drink this. I just want to wear it on my pulse points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's got a nice sweet oh. nose, but yeah. not, not overly sweet. It's, a, it's almost like a gentle, like a, uh, a fly, is that right? Like a floral sweetness? It's um, like a jasmine or something. A jasmine. It's a it's it's a heavy perf. You know, I don't even want to say heavy because I'm, I'm running out of descriptors here. But it is it's aromatic enough. It's aromatic. There you go. It's aromatic enough, but it's not spicy. It leans more toward to for me floral. And I'm not sure if you're getting any of that, but maybe it hasn't opened up enough. I'm using my Stasso Jarrito. I'm actually using the Stasso for the uh, for mezcal, so it's got a wider a wider mouth, and it, and it's actually lighter out of the bottle. The color is is a little bit lighter out of the bottle than it is in the bottle because the, the bottle, as you can see, it's it's beveled and cut to look like a like a pina. It's a light, it's a light straw. Yeah. But it's got a beautiful nose. I'm, I'm getting, I mean, I can see what you're saying about jasmine, just that little floral. Uh, I am getting a little bit of spice. Well, now now that it's opening up for me, I'm getting the barrel spicing. spicing. It's a baking spice. You know, the baking spices, you get, you know, the wood, the wood is, is really nice on this. It's not overpowering at all. No, not at all. In fact, that's what surprised me was the, the, the hints of a of, of floral on on the nose, because that 
usually don't get you don't get that you get some spiciness and it goes from there and maybe that could it, it months in the barrel too yeah well double barrel that's it first of all there's a lot of a lot of manual labor involved in in this in just this, this reposado this is the baking spices are nope. we getting any are we getting some allspice all also I'm getting some vanilla. Okay. Spice. Yeah. I miss that floral, that 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 hint of fl flower on the top. Now I'm now I'm getting more more wood, more barrel. Nice. That's let's let's oh, dive yeah. in. Let's see what what it tastes like. Mmm. Mm. Nice. Oh, man. <clears throat> it still has that that peppery spiciness from the from the blanco. <clears throat> you know, again, this is the that this blanco we said was this was a beefy blanco, and and I would have to say it's holding up very well to the double barreling. Oh yeah, this is a substantial reposado. Now this is one that you could do cocktails with, wouldn't you? Oh yeah. Because it'll stand up. It, it's not gonna. It's not. It's not shy. It's not gonna. It's not gonna shy away from the other ingredients. Now, see at the bottom, I'm getting like hints of, of either it's the wood char or tobacco or something. It's a like a bitter, maybe like some dark chocolate or something, or cacao, you know, or cacao. Oh, this is a very substantial reposado. Wow. So, so, so it's true what the notes say, that it's got that hearty body and character of most, most añejos. I believe it. I believe it. I'm a believer. Well, now, so um, we didn't get any price points for the Blanco, but what, what, do you have any pricing on what this looks like? Uh, the, are they, pr would I'd be interested to find out if the pricing leans more toward the Reposado side or more toward the Añejo side, uh, because it, it's there's there's some work involved, there's some barrel management involved that 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 is unique, and and doesn't happen very often. Well, this is very good, man. Mm. Early Old Town Liquor has. He has everything. Of course he does. <laughs> Hotel Laker. You know, Alex, it's not... Um, I found the Blanco much more clinging to my palate than this one does. This one is very, very clean. It's got a, it's got a very... Um, other than the, the, the explosion at the rear of the palate with the pepper from the Blanco... Um, this is a very enjoyable. In, in fact, I can't even I can't even detect the the French oak because French oak, by and large, is pretty sweet. It's got a good uh, a good depth even for this reposado. I think it's from nine months of a barrel. Uh, let me see if I can find a, pri a price point for this. Number one, yes, I'm twenty one. <laughs> I love it when they ask that question. So, okay, so check it out. Old Town Laker, mm -hmm. Cal Southern California. The Blanco, which we tasted previously, is thirty nine ninety nine. Oh my God, it's a steal. The Blanco is forty nine ninety five. Okay, see, that's what I thought. It's it's somewhere in between. Uh, Somewhere in between a low end uh, añejo and a high end reposado, but it's a it's a rare position to be in because if you if you serve this to somebody who is an oakhead friend of yours or is an añejo you know an añejo lifestyler, he wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> he wouldn't know this again. Alex, are we starting to see a trend? Are we starting to see where 
Remember last year, last couple of years, it kept saying that the, the reposado category was making a comeback. You know, there were some really substantial, wonderful reposados, which are really difficult to make because you can mess it up. And this is the second time I've seen a brand that you and I have tasted together where the Blanco and the Reposado make a statement, and the Reposados particularly because it makes more of an Añejo statement. In other words, it fits the bill of the Añejo. So it's almost as if it, there's no need to have one. Well, imagine you're eliminating a, a, a SKU, eliminating a, a, a product. Yeah, but, but again, oh, and, and I don't know, is that commercial suicide? Because the, the premium and super premium categories are, are where, where the huge, the largest growth is. Right. That's a good question. Uh, I, you know, are you shooting yourselves in the foot? I don't know. Um, I like what I taste. Uh, this is, this is, I, I say brand of promise nominee in the, in the Reposado category. We have to call it a Reposado. We can't call it an Añejo because it literally doesn't exist. I, I don't even know if they have it in the plans to make an Añejo, but why would you? You know? Wow. By the way, uh, for those of you who, who, who may not know, this tequila, number one tequila, is owned by two guys, two comics, very, very beloved comics, Ron White and Alex Raimundo. Ron White, of course, of the uh, Blue Collar Tour guys, and, and, and uh, maybe you've seen him on Roadies, on... Um, uh, on one of your cable stations, or uh, and Alex Raimundo is one of the original Latin kings of comedy. Um, funny thing is, Ron is married to Alex's sister, so it's all, it's all in the family. It's all in the family, and and I think I think because the two of those guys are comics, they came up with the name Number Juan. So there, that's where you have that's where you you get to have a wonderful day. So. <laughs> Wow, man, I'm impressed. Look at how pretty the legs and tears look on on the glass. They they sheet, they don't clink. You, and it's, you know, I don't even see any. They, obviously, they're not using, uh, uh, you know, they're not using any additives, so it's not like you're seeing a really clingy legs and tears. You're just seeing a natural, a natural cr uh, a crown of uh, string of pearls. Uh -oh. But you know, for that long in the barrel, Alex, I I'm surprised that it's actually it, it actually looks lighter in your glass than it does in the bottle. Right. So. Anyway, um, that is our take on number one reposado. Uh, for for uh, for those of you. Reposado. A reposado, and we can't we can't call it an anejo, but anyway. Um, Stick with us because we'll be right back. This is a brand that completely skips, just overlooks the Añejo category and goes directly to the extra Añejo. It's and too good. It's too good for it. What's it? Oh, yeah. You know, there's a, there's a story that goes with it, and Alex Ramundo was nice enough to, to, to tell me a little bit of the story. So I'll, I'll share that with everybody here on our, our next uh, podcast and our next uh uh, our next uh, YouTube tasting, but that is our take on our Brand of Promise nominee in the Reposado category. That is number one. Thank I, you. Tequila. I am Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman over there is Alex Perez in Southern California. Thanks for watching. Sipping on the cuff. Sipping off the cuff. Excuse me. <laughs> the cup. Hey, hey. <laughs> and uh, keep watching and please uh, subscribe. And as always, sip wisely.